All right. Hey, everyone. Simon here. We are in Assassin's Creed Revelations. And uh, today we are going to look at the old Roman ruins. So I guess we should start with the, uh, the Hippodrome here, since it is quite iconic. Uh, let's see what the, what the game has to say about uh, this particular structure. As you can see in the game, it's um, half demolished. So uh, we might want to find out what that's about. Let's see, what else are we... The Ward Obelisk. Okay, we're going to look at that soon. There's the Obelisk of Theodosius. That's also here, in the same place. But... What we want to look at is... Is not those two... Is... Um... Where is it? Where is it? Here we go, Hippodrome. So the game says the Hippodrome once stood as one of the purest examples of Constantinople's classical Greek origins. Though the original structure dates back to pre-Roman times when the city was still called Byzantium, the Hippodrome was enlarged and improved by Constantine the Great and remained in use for nearly 800 years. It began to fall into disrepair after 1200 around the time of the Fourth Crusade when marauding Christian armies from the west sent forth by Pope Innocent III sacked the city on the way to the Holy Land. By the time uh, Byzantine Emperor Michael Paleologos had recaptured the city in 1261, the Hippodrome was in a poor state and he made no effort to restore it to its former glory. When the Ottomans took over in 1453, all hope that it would ever be repaired did go to nothing, since chariot racing wasn't really a Turkish hobby. Alright. So, chariot racing... I still think it can be used for camel races, which kind of is... I don't know if Turkish are into horse races, camel races. So it was built... the original building was built before the Romans took over. So it, uh, it was quite long ago. Alright, so let's go to Wikipedia and see what it says about... Istanbul... Oh, Istanbul... Hippodrome Hippodrome of Constantinople So the place So you've got the obelisk Which we can see in the game Don't really see any actual Hippodrome though Huh They've completely demolished the stands apparently All we see are the two obelisks So that's a reconstruction that's interesting Let's just look at this one but uh, yeah, okay, it's gone. It's completely gone. What well, is that? But that's not really uh, all that remarkable. Oh, I can't. Yeah, okay, Google image. Never mind. All right, so Wikipedia says that the Hippodrome of Constantinople was a circus that was the sporting and social center of Constantinople, capital of the Byzantine Empire. Today, it is a square named Sultan Ahmed. Meyedani, Sultan Ahmed Square, in the Turkish city of Istanbul, with a few fragments of the original structure surviving. The word hippodrome comes from the Greek hippos, horse, and dromos, path or way. For this reason, it is sometimes called uh, Etmeyadani, a horse square, in Turkish. Horse racing and chariot racing were popular pastimes in the ancient world and hippodromes were common features of Greek cities in the Hellenistic, Roman, and Byzantine eras. So the Romans were more into colosseums, where people killed people, but uh, the Greeks were slightly less brutal and they were into horse and chariot racing. Uh, history and use, oh that's interesting. History and use, although the hippodrome is usually associated with Constantinople's days of glory as an imperial capital, it actually predates that era. The first Hippodrome was built when the city was called Byzantium and was a provincial town of moderate importance. In AD 203, the Emperor Septimius Severus rebuilt the city and expanded its walls, endowing it with a Hippodrome, an arena for chariot races and other entertainment. Uh, in AD 324, the Emperor Constantine the Great decided to move the seat of the government from Rome to Byzantium, which he, which he renamed Nova Roma. This name failed to impress, and the city soon became known as Constantinople, the city of Constantine. Constantine greatly enlarged the city, and one of his major undertakings was the renovation of the Hippodrome. 
It is estimated that the Hippodrome of Constantine was about 450 meters long and 130 meters wide, and stands its stands were capable of holding 100,000 spectators. Its stands were capable of holding 100,000 spectators. It is 130 meters wide. 130 meters wide, you say? Well, this, on the other hand, is... Let me just look at this. So that's about 3 meters high. So that's like 3 and then 6, 9, 12, 15. 15 for that. Make that another 15. And then, so this is about 45 meters wide at most. Probably less, probably more like 40. Uh, the real thing is 130, so imagine this thing being about 3 to 4 times bigger. And you would have some idea of how big this thing is. Probably like 4 times bigger. Let me just run back here. And gaze up on the Hippodrome. So imagine that. 4 times bigger. Or three times bigger. Three and a half times or something. So you can kind of imagine how big that thing would s supposed to be. Alright. So that's why this thing is so pathetic in the game. Wow, they really... I mean... I don't know... They really shrunk it down. I'm just wondering if that's a good idea. To shrink it down so much. Also, you can imagine how big the real city is. If this is... You know, a third or about a quarter of real size. The real city of Istanbul must be much, much bigger. Let me just look at this. If you remember the maps we looked at from previous videos... Okay, the, the Hippodrome in real life is, is bigger on the map, too. Alright, well, they, they, really, they really kind of scaled it down. Alright. The racetrack at the Hippodrome was U-shaped, and the Kathima... Kath Kathisma Kath Kathisma Empress Lodge was isn't that I don't know is was located at the eastern end of the track at the eastern end so it's a U shaped eastern end so the so the thing is like 400 meters long so if you kind of imagine a really long U the Empress Lodge would have been on at that end, so the emperor saw the start and the end of the race easily. So the, I guess the chariots would kind of race away, turn around, and then come back, and that was the uh, the course. Uh, the Kathisma would be accessed directly from the great palace through a passage only the emperor or other members of the imperial family could use. The Hippodrome boxes, which had four statues of horses in gilded copper on top, stood at the northern end, and the Sfindon, Stif, Stif, Sfindone, curved tribune of the U-shaped structure, the lower part of which still survives, stood at the southern end. The, these four gilded horses, now called the Horses of St. Mark, whose exact Greek or Roman ancestry has never been determined, were looted during the Fourth Crusade in 1204 and installed on the facade of St. Mark's Basilica in Venice. Venice! Destroying the Byzantine Empire! There you go, looting your horses? Yeah. Uh, the, tracks was lined, the track was lined with other bronze statues of famous horses and chariot drivers, none of which to survive. Because Venice! Stealing your statues! Uh, the Hippodrome was filled with statues of gods, emperors, and heroes, among them some famous works, such as Hercu Heracles, Heracles by Lysipops, Lysipos, Romulus and Remus with their wolf and the serpent column of the Platean tripod. What, this? Huh. In his book, The Ceremonies, the Emperor Constantine Porphyrogenitus described the decorations in the Hippodrome at the occasion of the visit of Saracen or Arab visitors, mentioning the purple hangings and rare tapestries. Purple is really expensive. So purple dye, back then, was made with a rare shellfish. So you, like, the, the, the shellfish is like a tiny little thing, so just to dye 
a large piece of cloth in purple required you to kill a lot of shellfish to get their blood, which was purple, and then you die. So it's really expensive, basically. Uh, throughout the Byzantine period, the Hippodrome was the center of the city's social life. Huge amounts were bet on chariot races, and initially four teams took part in these races, each one financially sponsored and supported by a different political party within the Roman Byzantine Senate. The blues, the greens, the reds, and the whites. The reds and the whites gradually weakened and were absorbed by the other two major factions, the blues and greens. So it was a, a four-party system, and then it turned into a two-party system. A total of up to eight chariots, powered by four horses each, competed on the racing track of the Hippodrome. These races were not simple sporting events, but also provided some of the rare occasions in which the emperor and the common citizens could come together in a single venue. Political discussions were often made at the Hippodrome, which could be directly accessed by the emperor through a passage that connected the Katsima with the great palace of Constantinople. So it wasn't just a just a horse race, like you know, people kind of came here to talk about political things. But notice up to eight chariots, four horses each. So that's like thirty-two horses side by side. Thirty-two horses side by side. So you can imagine why I'm quite disappointed for how small this is. Thirty-two horses side by side. So they have to kind of race down one end, turn around and go back up the other. How do you fit 32 horses side by side? Uh, I'm just thinking like like four horses and maybe like this wide. And then eight of those. Yeah, this has to be like at least four times bigger than it is now. At least four times bigger. Uh, the rivalry between the blues and the greens often became mingled with political or religious or religious rivalries and sometimes riots, huh. uh, which amounted to civil wars that broke out in the city between them. The most severe of these were the Nika riots of 532, in which an estimated 30,000 people were killed, and many important buildings, such as the Second Hagia Sophia Church, were destroyed. The current Third Hagia Sophia was built by Justinian following the Nika Revolt. So these these riots were actual, basically political conflicts between factions in the city. And they broke out into riots. I guess they didn't have elections back then, so they had riots instead. Uh, Constantinople never really recovered from its sack during the Fourth Crusade by the Venetians. And even though the Byzantine Empire survived until 1453, by that time, the Hippodrome had fallen into ruin. The Ottoman Turks, who captured the city in 1453 uh, and made it the capital of the Ottoman Empire, were not interested in racing and the Hippodrome was gradually forgotten, although the site was never actually built over. The Hippodrome was used for various occasions such as lavish and days-long circumcision ceremony of the sons of Sultan Ahmed III, Circumcision ceremony lasting several days. I don't, <laughs> that sounds horrible. Uh, in Ottoman miniature paintings, the Hippodrome is shown with the seats and monuments still intact. Although the structures do not exist anymore, today's Sultan Ahmed Square largely flo follows the ground plan and dimensions of the now vanished Hippodrome. Alright, so it's gone, but it's still the same shape. So there's the, there's a, like a, a plan of it. So if you look at the Hagia Sophia there, the Hippodrome is like four times as big as the Hagia Sophia. And it's a U-shape as you see there. I hope that helps you understand what it looks like. Oh, the Great Palace is here. And it's massive. The Great Palace is massive. Alright. Uh, what else do we have to see? Um, where were we? Hippodrome Monuments? Oh, we might as well... Ward Obelisk. Actually, no, we will look at this stuff later on, because there's Obelisk of Theodosius and the Ward Obelisk, which are in the game. We won't look at that right now, actually. So we'll look at that later on. Contemporary Description. We should probably look at that. Ruins of the Hippodrome from an engraving by Onofrio Penvenio in his work Deludis 
si se sensibus so sensi so sensibus what is that i can't even i can't tell what that says anyway so but by, by the time by 1580 it's kind of in ruins already oh actually that's kind of similar to what we see in the game there's a few columns and we only have two columns in the game there's like one two three four five six standing columns there but you know only the u at the end still stands now uh, the area is officially called certain oh wait a minute contemporary description that means today we don't really want to i don't really think we Inventory excavated uh, portion of structure. No, that's not too important. That's not too important. All right, well let's look, let's look at these two columns, these two obelisks, which still stand today. They uh, demolished the hippodrome, but not the columns. So it's that one and this one. Apparently, there used to be even more columns. So, database and locations so the ward obelisk alternately called the ward column or constantine's column this obelisk stands proudly in the center of the old hippodrome though it seems to fit the style of the original structure it was actually built some 500 years later in the 10th century it was repaired and further augmented by constantine the seventh thus earning its current name after the ottoman conquest when the hippodrome was finally and fully abandoned the obelisk became a favorite location for the genissaries to train and show off their strength in climbing contests. Okay. Climbing, you say? I can do that. Alright, so that's the old ward obelisk. Shouldn't somebody, like, repair it? It looks like it's almost about to fall down, given how eroded it is. Look at it. So the ward obelisk, also known as the Constantine obelisk, is situated near the 17th column at the southern side of the Hippodrome of Constantinople. Uh, the 32-meter-high obelisk was constructed of roughly cut stones by Constantine the VII. Its exact construction date is unknown, but it's named after Constantine the VII after he repaired it in the 10th century. At that time, it was reportedly decorated with gilded bronze plaques that portrays the victory of Basil I, who was the grandfather of Constantine the VII. Also, there was a sphere at the top of the obelisk, However, reportedly, these gilded bronze plaques were stolen and melted down by Fourth Crusaders in 1204. Since young genitories like to use the obelisk to climb and show their prowess, prowess the obelisk suffered further damage to its surface. <laughs> the worn obelisk was depicted on the reverse of the Turkish 500 lira banknotes. All right, it doesn't really say very much. It's a block of stone repaired by Constantine the Seventh. Hold on, wait, wait, wait. 32 meters high. 32 meters. How tall is this thing? So I am about the same height as the base. I just want to cover 32, 2, and then, and then 5. Let me just get up here. Get up, get up. Alright, so now get up, bro. So that's Ooh, and then five, just mid five, ten, twenty. It's not quite the right height. It's not quite the right height. Ten, twenty. 30. Actually, no, it, it is. I think it is about thirty-two. Yeah, I think it is about thirty-two meters high in the game. So the column is the right size in the game, which means that if you imagine that the hippodrome is about four times bigger, the column's actually kind of small. You would imagine that the hippodrome would be massive and the column's just kind of this little thing inside it. Alright, let's go to the other one. The Obelisk of Theodosius or something? Oh, and this! Let's see, there's inscriptions at the bottom. And then look at this carving here. It shows the emperor at the races. So there's the emperor sitting in the stands and there's people around him. So this actually shows what it looks like at the time. And then there's like Egyptian obelisk up here, alright. So the database and locations. Where is where is wait a minute, wasn't it just here? Did I go past it? 
Oh, there you go. Obelisk of Theodosius. An authentic Egyptian obelisk commissioned by Pharaoh Tutmos III. Or Tutmose III? I don't know if the E is silent or not. English is so inconsistent. Uh, this monument occupied a place of prominence outside the temple of Karnak in Egypt. Carved from exquisite red granite. Red granite? It doesn't look red in the game. Uh, the hieroglyphs on its four sides recount the tales of some of Pharaoh's for some of the Pharaoh's greatest military victories. In 357 CE, the obelisk was unabashedly pilfered by the Roman Emperor Constanti Constantinus II and taken to Alexandria in celebration of its 20th year as, as sovereign. So to celebrate your 20th year as sovereign, you go and take somebody else's obelisk. Cool, bro. There it remained for 40 years until the Emperor Theodosius moved it again, this time to Constantinople, where he placed it in the Hippodrome on an ornately carved base that he had specially constructed to hold it. Alright, curious. And Wikipedia says, uh, The obelisk of Theodosius is the ancient Egyptian obelisk of Pharaoh Tatmose III re-erected re in the Hippodrome of Constantinople by the Roman Emperor Theodosius III. The, first. Uh, the obelisk was first set up by Tatmose III to the south of the seventh pylon of the great temple of Karnak. The Roman Emperor Constantius II had is and another obelisk transported along the Nile the river Nile to Alexandria to commemorate his twenty years on the throne in three fifty seven. The other obelisk was erected on the spina of the Circus Maximus in Rome in the autumn of that year and is today known as the Lateran Obelisk. Okay, so, so the other one went to Rome, and this one eventually came to Constantinople. Whilst the obelisk that would become the Obelisk of Theodosius remained in Alexandria until 390, when Theodosius I had it transported to Constantinople and put up on the spina of the Hippodrome there. <laughs> Funny. It's gonna go loot your obelisks. See that there? That's interesting. Uh, the obelisk of Theodosius is of red granite from Aswan and was originally 30 meters tall like the Lateran obelisk. The lower part was damaged in antiquity, probably during its transport or re-erection. And so the obelisk today is only 18.54 meters high. Wait a minute, they broke off a whole 12 meters of it. Uh, it's 25.6 meters if the base is included. Uh, between the four corners of the obelisk and the pedestal are four bronze cubes used in its transportation and re-erection. Each of its four faces has a single central column of inscription celebrating Tutmosis the Third's victory on the banks of the river Euphrates in 1450 BC. Uh, the pedestal, the marble pedestal, has best reliefs dating to the time of the obelisk's re-erection. -re in Constantinople. On one face, Theodosius I is shown offering the crown of victory to the winner of the chariot races. So this one here. So there's the emperor, there's the crown of victory. Uh, framed between arches and Corinthian columns with happy spectators. Very, very happy spectators. Now uh, musicians and dancers assisting in the ceremony. In the bottom right of the scene is the water organ of Tessibius, and on the left another instrument. Okay, that's interesting. Uh, there are obvious traces of major damage to the pedestal and energetic restoration of it. Missing pieces have been repaired at the pedestal's bottom corners by cubes of porphyry resting on bronze cubes already mentioned. The bronze and porphyry cubes are of identical form and dimensions. There is also a vertical gash up one of the obelisk's faces which looks like a canal from above. These repairs to the base may be linked to the cracking of the obelisk itself after it suffered a serious accident, perhaps an earthquake, and an unknown date in antiquity. All right, so there's the there's the one we see in game, but on the other faces of the base, there's the emperor and his court. There's a picture of the chariot race itself, and submission of the barbarians. Interesting. We don't get to see that in the game though. Emperor is caught, transported the obelisk, traces vertical gash. All right. Inscriptions: the pedestal, the pedestal's east face bears an inscription in five Latin hexameters. Hexameters. This is slightly broken at the bottom, 
but it was transcribed in full by travelers in the 16th century. It reads, Though formerly I opposed resistance, I was ordered to obey the serene masters and to carry their palm, once the tyrants had been overcome. All things yield to Theodosius and to his everlasting descendants. This is true of me too. I was mastered and overcome three times in three times ten days, so that's thirty days, and raised towards the upper air under Governor Proculus. So this is about talking about how they conquered Egypt, I guess. On the west face, the same idea is repeated in two elegant couplets rendered in Byzantine Greek, although this time it reports that the re-erection took 32 days, not 30. Translation, this column with four sides which lay on the earth, only the Emperor Theodosius dared to lift again its burden. Proclus was invited to execute his order, and this great column stood up in 32 days. Right. Right, so it talks about how it basically celebrates the fact that Theodosius stole the column <laughs> and put it in the uh, in the hippodrome. Nice story, guys. Okay, well, so that's the hippodrome and the two columns. So I guess we should look for something else to uh, to read about. Let's go to the database location. This, this might take a while. Maiden's Tower. We've looked at. Should we look at the Great Chain? It's not really an old Roman ruin. Let's leave that till later. Hagia Irene we've seen. Forum of Constantine. Let's do that. Where exactly is the Forum of Constantine? Forum... I don't know if it's in the game. That's the Hagia Sophia... Oh, there it is. It's nearby. Good. Alright, so let's go over to the Forum of Constantine. Wait, isn't the Forum of Constantine inside the Great Palace, if we remember the map from earlier. It's either in the Great Palace or just outside the Great Palace, back in Byzantine times. There's a giant column here too. Forum of Constantine, this is it? Well, according to the game, it's just a, just a square in the city. Wait a minute, this column has like Iron bra I didn't mean to do that. This column has iron brackets on it. Let me just climb to the top because I can. Ah, uh, it's a column. Not that interesting. Uh, Alright, so let's see what the game has to say about the Forum of Constantine. No, don't do that. Database... Locations. That's not... Wait a minute. That's not even what we see in the game. There's a war in the column there. What's going on there? Built on the city's second hill to commemorate the glorious ascendance of Constantine the Great to the Roman throne, the Forum of Constantine and the Column of Constantine at its center also symbolize the birth of a new city from the ashes of another. On May the 11th, 3.30, the city called Byzantium was no more, and Constantinople, or Constantinopolis, city of Constantine, was christened. Originally crowned by a statue of the god Apollo, the column has weathered many hardships and numerous renovations over the centuries. By the time of the Ottomans, both the column and the original forum had shrunk considerably but both remain a treasured part of the city's history and character. Alright, so the square used to be much bigger. But apparently over time, uh, other buildings encroached up on it. The picture in the game isn't even this. I have no idea what that's about. Uh, Forum of Constantine. And the column of Constantine. Okay, so it actually kind of looks like that in real life. What is this picture from? Oh, this is a reconstruction. Never mind. That's the one in, in the game we have now. This is a reconstruction of the forum by somebody using computer graphics. And then I don't know what this other stuff is. Is that the real thing today? 
Let's go to Wikipedia. Forum of Constantine. Wait a minute, there's a lot of ruins around here. The Forum of Constantine was built at the foundation of Constantinople immediately outside the old city walls of Byzantium. It was circular and had two monumental gates to the east and west. The Column of Constantine, which still stands upright and is known today in Turkish as... I don't know how to pronounce that was erected in the center of the square. The column was originally crowned with a statue of Constantine I as Apollo, but a strong gale in, 15, or in 1150 caused the statue and three of the column's upper drums to fall, and a cross was added in its place by the Byzantine Emperor Manuel I Komnenos. Otherwise, the forum remained nearly intact until the Fourth Crusade, the Venetians, in the 12... In 12 to 1204. The city's first senate house lay on the north side of it. We know from the sources that the square was decorated with a number of antique statues, but it is impossible to determine the exact appearance and location. The forum suffered major damage in a fire started by the soldiers of the Fourth Crusade in 1203. After the sack of 1204, the antique statues decorating the forum were melted down by the crusaders. Yes, Venetians coming into your city and stealing all your things. So that's the Column of Constantine, the thing we're standing on right now. Known as the Burnt Stone, is a Roman monumental column constructed on the orders of the Roman Emperor Constantine the Great in 330 AD. Maybe I should... Why don't we do more of this stuff? We just put columns up to celebrate things. Do we still do that? Uh, it commemorates the Declaration of Byzantium as the new capital city of the Roman Empire. The column is located uh, on... I'm not going to try to pronounce that. Okay, fine, we don't really need to know. We know where it is. Alright, we know where it is. Oh, look, there's a reconstruction of it. I don't know if the statue is accurate. There's a picture of it being in a sad state, and there's the reconstruction. The column was dedicated on May the 11th, 330 AD with a mix of Christian and pagan ceremonies. In Constantine's day, the column was at the center of the Forum of Constantine, known today as uh, Chimbalitas Square, an oval forum situated outside the city walls in the, in the vicinity of what may have been the west gate of Antoninia. On its erection, the column was 50 meters tall. 50, constructed of several cylindrical porphyry blocks. The exact number of porphyry blocks is disputed, but common figures range from 7 up to as many as 11. These blocks were surmounted by a statue of Constantine in the figure of Apollo. The orb he carried was said to contain a fragment of the true cross. <laughs> Everything contains the true cross, apparently. And the foot of the foot of the column was a sanctuary which contained relics claimed to be from the crosses of the two thieves who were crucified with Jesus Christ at Calvary. The baskets from the loaves and fishes miracle, an alabaster ointment jar belonging to Mary Magdalene and presumably used by her for the washing of the feet of Jesus. Why would she have an alabaster ointment jar? Uh, the Palladium of ancient Rome uh, a wooden statue of Pallas Athena from Troy. Okay. So apparently there's a lot of loot at the foot of the column. A strong gale in 1106 AD caused the statue and three of the upper cylinders of the column to fall. Some years later, Byzantine Emperor Manuel I Komnenos placed a cross on top in the place of the original statue and added a commemorative inscription that read Faithful Manual Invigorated This Holy Work of Art which has been damaged by time. Bronze wreaths once covered the joints between the columns but these were taken by Latin crusaders who looted the city during the Fourth Crusade. <laughs> we keep bringing this back up. The cross was removed by the Ottoman Turks after the fall of Constantinople in 1453. Bronze wreaths once covered the joints between the drums. I mean, these were these probably were not decorative. They probably served a structural purpose, like to, to kind of lock the drums together. 
Uh, earthquakes and a fire in 1779 destroyed the neighborhood surrounding the column, leaving it with black scorch marks and earning it the name Burnt Column. The column was restored by Abdul Hamid I, who had the present masonry base added. The base was strengthened in 1779. The original platform of the column is 2.5 meters below ground. Alright, so the original platform has been buried over time. Uh, the Column of Constantine is one of the most important examples of Roman art in Istanbul. The column is 35 meters tall today. Restoration work has been going on since 1955. Cracks in the porphyry were filled and the metal brackets renewed in 1972. Since 1985, the monuments of the historic peninsula of Istanbul, including the column, have been listed as a World Heritage Site. So the metal, the metal brackets that we see are actually modern. They're there to stop the uh, to stop the stone from cracking apart and the whole thing falling over. So, wait, who? No, you. Get out of here. Nope. 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 Alright, so these metal brackets are not really historically accurate. But if you go there today, you will see them. And they're there to stop the thing from falling apart. Which probably means I should stop climbing on it, because the thing is probably going to fall apart soon. And apparently the base is also not not historically accurate. I'm not sure about the square though. The square is just completely gone, so we don't see it anymore. All we have left is the uh, column. All right. Okay. What other things do we have to look at? Locations. Obelisk. Look at that. Rose moss we've seen. Cistern of Moses. Built on the 7th hill by Roman Emperor Anastasius in the 6th century, the cistern of Moses was fairly large by Constantinople standards and notable for the fact that it is one of the few above ground cisterns still visible today, just behind the tennis courts and park benches. Honestly, if you look closely, you can still see some of some sections of its outer walls beneath all the grass and dirt. Alright, so we don't really see it anymore. I believe. That's the cistern where the uh, Romanes are. I believe that cistern is somewhere around here. Somewhere around... It's this one, I believe. Let's travel over there. Where's the closest sewer entrance? There? Alright. Let's shimmy our way back to the, uh, the Hippodrome and take the sewers over to the cistern. Uh, if I can find the... There it is. Yes, most interesting. Alright, now don't go in in the sewers. Uh, where are we going? No, uh, oh, Arcadius. Yep. And might as well go to... Of most... Yes. Uh, wait a minute. There's no cistern of Saint Moses. Is them bull wiki map yet? There's no Wikipedia article. Oh, I'm sad. I'm sad. There's no Wikipedia article for it. Moses. Life, legacy. There's no, there's no article. Page does not exist. The emperor to supply water to Constantinople is the third of late Roman sisters. Really, there's no, there's no article. Does not have an article by this name. Ah, well, that sucks. And the only reference to it is those. Okay, well, there's no article, guys. What about in, in other languages? Well, let's just look at the images, because we can. So in, <laughs> in Assassin's Creed, it is this one. Today, you can't really... Oh, there's an underground thing, apparently. Well, no, it's not useful. Not useful at all. All right. 
so we don't see it in the game. That's a real shame. Let me just walk. Maybe that's not even the cistern. Let me just walk over to where I thought the cistern was and see if that looks familiar to us. Uh, I keep walking at these dead ends. I'm gonna be here. Let's go back around. And let us. No, I don't want to be here neither. Let us see if this might be. Let's go to Google Maps as well. And uh, look it up in Google Maps. And see if we can verify the location of it. So I'm guessing it's this. I'm guessing, I don't know, maybe, possibly. Let's just jump in the water. Aha! Alright, so we don't really see where it is. Maps? No. Really? Cistern of Saint Boat. Really? You don't have that on... on your maps? Fascinating. Nobody knows where it is. <laughs> Alright, well, never mind that then. History has forgotten you. Alright, well, database. Locations. And uh, the Arsenal Harbour of Theodosius. Originally called the Harbour of Eleutherios by the city's original Greek inhabitants. This was the largest of Constantinople's numerous ports. Augmented by Emperor Theodosius in the 4th century, it became a major port for the trading of agricultural goods and later a military outpost. Trading of agricultural goods? I guess that means they bring food into the city from this port. Not long after the Ottomans took over, the port was noted to have succumbed to a heavy amount of silting, and it was eventually closed off and built over. By the 17th century, it had all but disappeared. In the 21st century, workers excavating the site in preparation for a project discovered the remains of dozens of ancient Byzantine galleys sunk deep into the soil. So the place has silted over and it no longer exists as a port. But they have found where it is. They know exactly where it is. I don't know if they've excavated it. Alright. Let's see if Wikipedia says much about it. Harbour of... Theodosius... I spelled it wrong. How about... Of, yeah, I do mean that. Thank you. <laughs> and they call it by the original Greek. Not much to say about it. The harbour of Eleutherios, later known as the harbour of Theodosius, was one of the ports of ancient Constantinople, the capital of the Byzantine Empire, located beneath the modern Yenikapi neighborhood of Istanbul, Turkey. The harbour was located on the south side of the peninsula where the city is built, facing towards the Sea of Mamara. The other harbours of the city were the harbour of Julian and the small harbour of the Bocolion Palace, likewise on the southern shore, and the harbours of Neorion and Pos Prosphorion on the northern side. The harbour was built in the late 4th century during the reign of Theodosius I and was the city's major point of trade in late antiquity. The area was later transformed for agricultural use due to the effects of erosion and silting. In Ottoman times, the area was built over. So it doesn't really say anything about what it looked like or what it did. It's just the location and what it was. In November 2005, workers on the Bosphorus Tunnel project discovered the silted up remains of the harbour. Excavations produce evidence of the 4th century port of Theodosius. There, archaeologists uncovered traces of the city wall of Constantine the Great and the remains of over 35 Byzantine ships from the 7th to 10th centuries, including several Byzantine galleys, remains of which had never before been found. Cool. In addition, the excavation has uncovered the oldest evidence of settlement in Istanbul with artifacts including amphorae, pottery fragments, shells, pieces of bone, horse skulls, and nine human skulls found in a bag, dating back to 6000 BC. Well, that's actually kind of cool. 
Unfortunately, all that historical stuff is underneath the ground. And so, um, unless you want to dig up the entire city, you're not going to find very much more of it, I don't think. Should we go over there? I don't know if there's too much point going over there in-game, because it's basically just... Like, you know, there's, there's, there's no real comparison to to the real thing, because the real thing is, is gone. Stoot it up and dote over. Let's, let's run over there, just to have a quick glance at it. But we can be pretty sure that the thing we see in-game is not historically accurate, because we don't know what it looks like in real life. This kind of makes me want to be an archaeologist. I just want to dig things up to find out what they look like. Although that would require me to go outdoors a lot. And there's no video games outdoors, so I don't know if I really want to be an archaeologist. <laughs> uh, where should I be going? I guess this way? Oh look, Byzantine guards. Alright, where am I... where am I going? The harbour should be behind here. Is that guy still chasing me? He is. Kind of. 